It's been a long time since we have checked in with the Windows on Duo project, but this morning today we have good reason to do that because we now have a new method for installing Windows. If you have held off in the past because it seemed too complicated, too scary, what have you, uh, now might be the time because it just got a ton simpler. So I'm gonna drop a link to this page in the description down below, but you're also going to, in this very video, watch me just do it right now in front of you. So let's scroll down and I'm just gonna film myself doing this. I'm going to assume it's gonna be a lot easier and I'll be able to just figure it out as I go and you're gonna to get to watch that. So files and tools needed. So first off, you're going to need the Windows UEFI. So we're gonna click on that and we are going to scroll down, I'm assuming, yes. The first thing that I'm, I'm running into actually here though is this bit of text here. So these things only work if you are running or if you had been running the most recent official OTA. I'm running one of Ty's Android 14 ROMs, but I flashed it on top of not the latest one. So I think I'm actually going to have to backtrack and flash back to the original and then start back here. If you're in the same spot as I am, I'll drop a link to this page as well. You'll scroll down, Surface Duo, put in your serial, it's on your SIM tray, and then we're gonna download that real quick and then we'll double back. If you need to know how to go through that process, I've already made a video that explains basically the same thing. You're gonna download that file, boot into recovery, sideload it, and you should be okay. So I'll just drop a link in the description as well to that video, otherwise you can just skip this part. So I just went through that process of sideloading the official update and this is the screen I've been greeted with. And I'm thinking what's happening here is that the data from the old installation is sort of messing with this. So I'm going to use the volume and power keys to factory reset. And now hopefully it will boot properly. Well, we're looking at a Windows logo instead of immediately going to that error screen, so. Let's give this another second. I think that that worked and I can continue on uh, here in just a moment. Okay, yeah, looks like we are indeed going to be okay. So from here, I'm going to have to get this thing very quickly set up and then enable developer options, which I will show in the guide here in just a little bit. So I'm gonna do this part off screen. You'll see none of it. Now there's a section here that kind of tries to explain which of these many different images you're going to need just read through them. I am booting a version of Windows higher than this build, 18.363. Use the normal variants, the ones that don't say secure boot disabled in the file name. So let's scroll down here. And after some clarification talking with Gus, I think I kind of understand which one I need to download. So the difference between fast boot and dual boot is not one will get rid of Android and the other one will not. It is basically how you're going to boot into Windows once this is done. The dual boot one will allow you to boot into Windows from your device without having to run a command through a computer. So you don't need a PC or a computer to boot into Windows. The fast boot version is the old way where you will just have to plug it into a computer and send a command and it will boot into Windows. Future Shane has to step in because uh, past Shane learned some things on the way here. We're not going to worry about the dual boot setup yet. That's complicating things more than it needs to be. So download the one that says fast boot, not the one that says dual boot. Let's go back. We already have the platform tools, ADB fast boot, but if you need that, you can click on that and you should be able to scroll down here, download for your platform of choice. I would recommend putting the files you're going to get in a folder called ADB in the root of your C drive. It just makes things simpler going forward, but you can put them wherever you want to put them. Like I said, it'll just make things simpler. And then you need this FFU tools. This is something I am not familiar with, but I clicked it and it has begun downloading. So presumably uh, we can take a look at these files and here's what we have. So that's the recovery file that I am flashing literally right now. This is the UEFI file and this is the loader tools. So we're gonna go ahead and extract both of these and then we will jump back to our guide. All right, so let's scroll down and let's get to part one, which is, I guess, part 1A or maybe it's part two, unlocking your bootloader. Now be very clear, this is going to reset your device, okay? Your device. We wiped in the process of doing this. All right, so on our Duo, we're going to swipe down a couple of times and go into settings. We're then going to scroll down to about, 
and then we're gonna come down to build number. We're gonna tap that a whole bunch of times until it's gonna ask for your pin. And at that point, you are now a developer. You can go back, go into system, and then developer options. And you're looking for OEM unlocking. You're gonna to toggle that, and you're also going to toggle on USB debugging. Now be very clear here, this is going to reset your device. At this point earlier, you probably downloaded the Android platform tools, you extracted them, and you wound up with a folder that had some stuff like this, and it might has a bunch of extra stuff that yours doesn't have, but it's this folder. I told you to put it in the root of your C drive because that makes things simpler, and here's why. Let's hit our start button, type in CMD for command prompt, open that up, whoop, come over here. We're gonna do CD, a change of directory, C colon slash ADB. Whatever you put, or wherever you put these files, that's what you're going to have to type, the full path to it. Boom. We're going to hit enter. We have now changed our directory to that particular folder. Now, back over here in this guide, there's an unlocking with bootloader link. Let's click on that really quickly, and it's going to tell you the commands. So you're going to plug your duo in at this point, take this command, paste it into that command prompt, and hit enter. You're going to re reboot into this screen. From there, in the same window, copy this and paste this. It's gonna unlock your bootloader, wipe your device, reboot, go through your setup process again, and then come back. Now, since your device has just been reset, you're gonna to have to re-enable developer mode. You don't have to do the OEM unlocking to toggle because it will already be toggled like you saw on my device, but do enable the USB debugging again. Now, what you're going to do is plug your freshly reformatted Surface Duo back into your computer, or perhaps it is still plugged in, and we have a new command to run. As you can see, ADB reboot bootloader, so we'll jump back over to mine. We're gonna paste that in with a right click and hit enter. My Duo is now rebooting, as you just heard, into its bootloader. Let's come back over here, scroll back down. And we have to start by booting the UEFI that we downloaded. So let's go back over to my right screen again. Let's go into the downloads folder and let me actually delete some stuff and clean this up for you. So we're gonna go into that folder that we extracted, the one that had the UEFI file in it. We're gonna take that file, we're gonna copy it, and we're going to put it into that ADB folder. Mine has a lot of stuff in it. Like I said, the yours doesn't, ignore that, but just place that file, UEFI to IMG, into this folder. If you use the one that said UEFI, apparently all you do is you paste in this command and hit enter, and then you hold down the volume down key on the side of your device until this screen pops up. It's simplest to start holding volume down when you see the screen that warns you that your bootloader is unlocked. Just start holding it there and you should see this screen. So this is what it should look like. You're gonna paste that in with the right click and hit enter. Okay, so now we are in the FFU loader. Congratulations. Let's scroll down, open a command prompt where you extracted the FFU loader tools archive. So we're gonna make this simple too. I just like simple things. Simple's better. So let's go back over to the right screen. Here's your FF, FFU loader tools folder. We're gonna rename this FFU. I'm gonna copy it, and guess what guys? I'm gonna go to the root of my C drive and I'm gonna paste it there and we're gonna open it up there. And to get one of those files, and yes, I had to take off my jacket, it was getting very warm in here, we're gonna have to go to Telegram. There's an actual Telegram channel that Gus is running where he's posting these FFUs. So there's a link to it there, let's click on it. And you're looking for this bottom one down here. If you kind of hover it over it, you'll see that it is 22631. That's the one you're gonna want. The one that's above this, that is build number 26040 is apparently very unstable. So what we're gonna do is click all three of these and download them. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but just have some patience and let it download. And while that's downloading, let's go grab 7-Zip as well. If you don't have it, I'll drop a link in the description. It is a extraction type device, right? So you're gonna go click on that link. You're gonna download your installer for your appropriate device, let that thing install, and then we'll jump ahead now. All right, so all three of these have downloaded. Let's highlight them all. Let's right click, maybe under show more options, seven zip, and let's do extract to here. And I think it should grab them all and should put them into one singular .ffu file, which as you can see has happened there. Now back on 
the command page, you see the next command we're supposed to run is this one, but we're gonna have to alter things about this because this is not our computer and this may or may not be the path to the file that we are talking about. So we're gonna grab this and we are going to change the name of it as well to 22631.ffu. You can do whatever you want, that's just what I'm gonna call it. Now, if you remember, I made my FFU folder be here in the root of my C drive. So we're gonna grab that and we're going to control X to cut, control V to paste. We're just gonna put it right there just to make things nice and simple. We're going to now hit the start button, type in CMD. This time we're gonna run as administrator and do our CD C colon slash FFU. So we have CD'd into that drive. We can come back over to this screen and we can grab the first bit of this, right? So all of this is fine. We can use all of that. Right click to paste that in. But now we have to change the next part. So this next part is the path to that file. That's not going to be accurate for you. So let's come back here. We're gonna right click on this. We're gonna go down to more options and we're gonna do copy as path. And then we're gonna come back here, space, right click to paste it in. Although it put quotations there, so we're gonna delete the quotations. Let's do that really quickly. And theoretically, we should be able to hit enter. And we're going to allow. And now, just like we have in this picture here, we have a progress bar that has appeared on my Surface Duo. I'm not gonna to touch it, I'm not gonna move it. But there's a progress bar and it's progressing. So we're gonna skip ahead until that part's done. All right, we now have the coveted check mark. It says now reboot the device, and I'm assuming we're gonna reboot it just using this command here. It says if the boot menu doesn't come up, press the volume down when running the above command to be 100% sure you get to the bootloader menu. So we're going to jump back over here and we're gonna paste in that command. And my screen has gone black. I'm gonna hold down the volume down key. I just heard another sound open it back up and I am on my bootloader screen, although it does look a little odd. Not entirely sure what's going on there. We're gonna plug it back in and we're going to go to the next step and hope that everything is okay. Run the following two commands. And this part wouldn't be run in this screen. So we're gonna to have to get ADB back up to do that part. So just like you did earlier, ADB folder, command prompt, CD, ADB. We're gonna try running that. And it says to run it twice. I'm not entirely sure why that would be the, oh, okay, yeah, so it did it something different both times. Current slot A, current slot B, so I guess that was correct. Now, unfortunately, it says, if this is your first time flashing this FFU file, you need to erase your Android user data partition. We're going to do fast boot erase user data, and then fast boot format user data. Now, through this process, it's going to probably reboot a couple of times. The first time it reboots, you may be greeted by that message that you saw me have earlier when I was reflashing Android, and you may have to use volume down and factory reset, set, set Android up again, enable developer options, enable USB debugging, and then you do ADB reboot bootloader. That'll reboot into that recovery screen again. And then once that is done, you'll go back and you'll run that same command again, fast boot boot uefi.img, and that will boot you back into Windows and you can sort of just continue that setup process that way. And that'll also be how you boot into Windows going forward. You're in Android, you wanna boot into Windows, something happens, it crashes, it's not fully stable yet, whatever. Plug it in, ADB reboot bootloader, fast boot, boot uefi.img, and you're back into Windows. And just so you can see this exactly as it is, up here we're going to do ADB reboot boot loader, make sure that my phone is actually awake. So you can see this when I hit enter. There it is going to the bootloader. And then fast boot, boot uefi.img. We'll hit enter again. And it immediately switched to that screen. And now as you can see, we have booted into Windows. Let's swipe up there to dismiss that. Sign in really quick and there it is. There is Windows running on both screens just fine. So let's fire up the file explorer. And as you can see here, both screens are functional. That snapping thing is usually like useful, but on this thing, it's not really useful anymore because it wants to do that. But you can see, you can move from one side 
to the other just fine. Let's close that. Let's jump into the start menu. And we have the Microsoft Store as well. That will load up just fine. You can see the tablet, the touch interface is there. So you can do like a tap down here or maybe it's a swipe up. There we go. To get back into your start menu. The store is working. Jumping over to YouTube and actually going to my YouTube channel. Let's go down here and we'll just play the most recent video on the channel unboxing the uh, Mint Green Pixel 8 Pro. I do not think audio is functional. I don't think that's a thing yet. I think you can pair like Bluetooth to it, but I don't think the speaker is currently functional. You can see it's working, guys. So there you go, guys. Windows on Surface Duo, definitely much easier than before. You're not having to type into disk part and, and change partitions and delete partitions. Trust me, this is a lot easier than it was before. Links to everything down below. Big thanks to Gus for helping me through this process. There were a few spots I had some questions, and like always, they were very receptive and kind of helped me figure some things out, and then that allows me to pass it on to you. So thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.